Hello and welcome back. Today we're going to be taking a look at machines that you need early on in your Create Mod world. We have five different machines here as well as a couple honorable mentions. So we're going to be going through the list one by one and showing you how they work and how to build them. There will also be schematics linked in the Discord down below. Number five is a cardboard machine. This takes most botanical products and turns them into cardboard you can use for various cardboard related activities. The way this works is you are pumping your plant material into a cauldron filled with water and a mechanical mixer. It outputs it and just presses it into a piece of cardboard. It takes four botanical materials to produce one cardboard. This here can be set as an andesite funnel or a brass funnel. It does not really matter. I have it set as a brass funnel for four, but you can do it as a to site that is perfectly okay. So now we're going to start building it. I always like to start with my inputs, outputs, and belts. My input is going to be a barrel over here. I have it on top of an andesite scaffolding. You can put whatever block you want. That is up to you. I just think that looks nice. Then we have a six long belt here, just like so, and then another barrel on the other end. So our input and our output, as well as some blocks to hold them up. I did dress that in andesite casings. You do not have to do that with this belt. I just like ones that are transporting items to, you know, have that aesthetic. Then I'm going to go ahead and place my basin in. This little spout on the end will adjust accordingly when we place on our funnels, which we're going to do next. Put our brass funnel here. I set it to four because that's exactly how many you need for one plant material, uh, one pulp. Put an andesite funnel since it's an input. You'll see the basin automatically outputs correctly. And then another andesite funnel here just to pick up the items. Next, I'm just going to add our mixer and our press. These are pretty simple to include and we can see exactly what needs power now. The last part we're going to need is our water input. I just usually place down our little infinite source, mechanical pump, mechanical pump. That way I can place it exactly exactly where I need it. Turn it around so the arrow is facing the direction the water needs to go, and then a pipe. From here, all you need to do is power it. Powering it, that is completely up to you on how you want to do it. You can follow along if you like, or connect it into your network as you see fit. All right, we're going to need a shaft in the belt here to supply power. Vertical gearbox, another vertical gearbox, rotated. And yet another vertical gearbox here with a cog wheel down here. This will supply power to our mechanical pump. Another gearbox here, and then a shaft going up with two more cog wheels to supply power to the mixer. I'm going to power this. I'm using creative motor because that is sufficient for what we're doing. Now, important note is our mechanical mixer needs to be running at least 32 RPM. But you can, of course, supply it with more if you'd like. That'll just take more stress units, but this is in a functional state. One thing I like to do is just make sure I set the filter in the basin to be pulp. Make sure we are not actually outputting other potential craftable components. All that's left to do is to just throw in some items to give it a test. You see they are coming through. They're getting mixed up. Pulp is coming out. It gets pressed into cardboard, and there you go. The machine is working. Of course, you can increase the speed of this, and it'll be a little quicker. Number four is a precision mechanism machine. This will automatically turn our golden sheets into precision mechanisms, as well as filter out any failed attempts. The way this works is the golden sheets will output onto this belt, deployed with our small cog wheel, large cog wheel, and iron nugget. If it is a complete mechanism or anything that is incorrect, it will stay in this barrel. If it is an incomplete mechanism, it will come back along this belt here to be cycled along again the five times needed to produce the precision mechanism. So we're going to go ahead and build this. Just like the last one, we're going to start by building our belts and our inputs and outputs. So we do need a barrel here. This is going to be our input barrel. It's offset one from where we're building the belts. This is important because it will stop items on this belt from going flying off in the other direction. You can of course adjust this as you see fit, but that's how we're going to do it for now. Then we need a five long belt right here going into yet another barrel. This will be our output as well as the filter to loop back around. And then we'll need a belt on the back side here. You have an andesite funnel going out in and then in, but here will be a brass funnel with a filter and we'll go over the filter in just a moment because that is going to be an interesting process. We'll make sure you set our funnels to point outwards. You can place our deployers up on top. I do like to rotate them so they're all powered together and we have our filter spot on the side we can interact with. From there I like to use hoppers on top because that's pretty much all the storage you'll need for these. Just a little bit of extra but not like a whole inventory's worth. Of course if you desire a whole inventory's worth that is up to you. You are more than welcome to do that. It will be your machine when you use it. From there, we can link in our power. I'm going to replace whatever's holding up this barrel right here with a gearbox. This will change the direction of power. And place two shafts here with a belt. I love using belts to power things. I know a lot of people don't, but I personally do. Put another gearbox here with a sh uh, shaft, another shaft, and then more belts coming down this way. And of course, much like last time, we're going to use a creative mower motor to power this. You can see everything's already moving in the right direction, and we can just go ahead and increase the RPM to make it super fast. But again, whatever speed your system is outputting is fine. This will work at any RPM. Then you're just going to want to filter your deployers. So our small cog wheel, large cog wheel, and iron nugget. And you can go ahead and feed these in if you'd like. That is up to you. Then the last thing you need is going to be a list filter. Now the list filter, this will be annoying. I'm going to be so frank about it. Because in order to make this effective, you want to make sure 
outputs incomplete precision mechanisms. But, this is the caveat, incomplete precision mechanisms are not something you can pull from any inventory, from JEI, you can't craft it on its own. So what I typically do is I'll take a single golden sheet, hit it in, and then take it off the belt at some point to put it in the filter. Make sure it ignores data, so that means it could be any MBT data, this bar here is MBT data, and you set it, tilt it, put it here, you can put your mechanism back on the network, <laughs> keep going and be complete. Number three is an electron tube machine. I find electron tubes to be very annoying to craft, especially in the large quantities you need them in Create. So this machine will help you do that. You'll just input some normal rose quartz. You want to input some sandpaper up here and then some iron ingots on this side. And this will automatically craft electron tubes. So how does this work? Our rose quartz are being outputted along the item drain. This allows them to move a block without needing belts. Makes it a little more compact. Goes on this depot where you have a deployer holding sandpaper that's just going to keep sanding down our rose quartz to polish rose quartz. That inputs into our mechanical craft here. It goes into the top slot because that's where it belongs in the crafting recipe. This is shaped crafting. On this side, we have our iron ingots that automatically output onto a belt with a deployer on it, which will then move it along down into the lower mechanical crafter. It is super simple. Those two then craft together into our lovely electron tubes. And then a lot of a lot of stuff going on to power out in the back. So let's go ahead and build this, right? So just like before, we're going to start with our input here. Then we're going to have another input on the far end of the build here. But we're going to go ahead and break whatever we're using to hold up this barrel. Then two blocks from the left, we're going to put our barrel here. Here. This is going to be our output barrel. We're getting another one for the input of our sandpaper. We'll, we'll circle back to that one because <laughs> it's a little more annoying. In your item drain, our depot. So again, this is going to be our rose quartz coming across and then polished rose quartz. Break one block down here, place a shaft in it and a shaft here, and then two more shafts like so. We can belt these up here. Andesite funnel here going out. Make sure we set it out. Same thing on this side, andesite funnel, but this will automatically pull. We can stop holding off on the mechanical crafters here. Place those in, but we want to make sure we rotate them so they're outputting upwards and they combine up. Upwards. Here we're going to put a brass funnel going in. We're going to set a filter on this to polished rose quartz. I'm going to circle back to that one. And then here an andesite funnel coming in. That's the base system. Then we need to add all the other stuff coming on. This side is not too complicated. We need our deployer. And we have our access here for the filter. I can put a hopper on top. And then since each sandpaper takes one slot in the inventory, I like to put storage on top of it as well. So that way you don't have to refill it often. They only do eight at a time, which is so annoying. I wish there was a better way. There are some add-ons that let you use sand in the deployer instead. So that is a possibility depending on what mod pack you are playing. Here you have a mechanical press. This will press your iron and gets into sheets. All right, so now we're gonna have to power everything. I was a little messy on how I powered this. I very much encourage you to find a better powered solution for your build, but this does work and you are welcome to copy it if you so desire. So of course we have our gearboxes in the back going along. We have a lot more gearboxes going down the sides because we need to have our cog wheel powering our mechanical crafter. And then we have yet another gearbox on the bottom because this is gonna be what uh, inputs the power. But wait, we need another gearbox because we need it powering this belt here. Cover that back up. Then we need two shafts to power up these two belts and then we can supply some power. It's going very slow. This is definitely one you're going to want to speed up as much as you can because it can be a very slow machine. I do realize I forgot to set the filter on this brass funnel. That is important so make sure you set that filter. Then you can go and fill this up with a bunch of sandpaper. It is good to set the filter on the deployer so you don't accidentally put something else in there. Then you're going to want to feed the machine with the items that you need to give it a nice little test. You see everything is working as it's supposed to. Alright so right here is number three. This is a casing machine. This will automatically produce the different types of casings you need in Create which is incredible incredibly helpful. You use a lot of casings in this mod. So it's very simple. You input some alloys up here and some logs down here. It only takes out the logs, presses them, uh, the alloy, and produces casings. And you can turn off this to just have it strip the logs as well. I am running with Farmer's Delight, so it is giving me tree bark. If you are not running Farmer's Delight, it will not give you that, but that is not important to this machine. <laughs> Alright, so this one's actually very, very compact. So we have our input, of course three blocks and then our output super small and the belt is only these two blocks this is gonna be where our mechanical saw is and we'll circle back to that one in a moment of course we want our funnels on each end and then up top gonna want a hopper with a barrel on top this is for our alloys then of course we're gonna put it in our machines we have our mechanical saw here we want to make sure it's going along our belt here and then our deployer right on top and we're gonna rotate nope that's actually correct we're gonna have our deployer right on top and honestly that's how you build the machine now we just need to power it i will admit powering this one can be a little annoying you want to make sure you're putting in the right rotational direction for your saw here if it's going the wrong direction it's actually gonna i'll put items in the wrong direction as well so just an important note we can put our gearboxes in very simple gearbox setup here 
And then, of course, my favorite thing of always is a belt running the power because it just, I love the aesthetic of it. And then our, our power here, we gotta flip the direction and we can turn up the speed so it's nice and fast. I realize we forgot to flip this funnel, fatal mistake. And then, of course, we're gonna load it up, make sure everything is working as it is supposed to. You can see, we are now producing anti-side casings. On to our first of a couple honorable mentions here. This is a setup to automatically produce andesite alloy. And this is important to show because it changes your crafting recipe from requiring two iron ingots and two andesite to one iron nugget and one andesite. So significantly cheaper, it's half the price for just this little setup. So we can feed it with our items here, put our iron nugget in and our andesite in, and it has these weighted ejectors to throw them up into this basin and mix them together, which will output andesite alloy over here across the basin. If you do get too close, you will pick up the items as they are just a fallen item. It is super compact, perfect for any starter crate mod base. Now, another cool thing about the setup is you can replace uh, the block the basin is sitting on, or break the basin, try that again. Break the block the basin is sitting on with a blaze burner, provide some heat to it, and then input zinc and copper. It'll produce brass instead. So it's a nice multi-use setup. You can either build a second one or just replace the block underneath when you want to run the blaze burner or just leave the blaze burner there and just not power it when you're not producing brass. Again, super simple. And I'm gonna show you how to make it. Of course, just like before, we're gonna start with our input and output. So we're gonna have our one of our input barrels here. The other one's a little funky. It's gonna be two blocks up, up here. There is a point for that and I'll explain that in a moment. We have our base in here an item drain for output, and we wanna make sure our chute is pointing this way, and then our andesite scaffolding with another barrel. Now we wanna make sure we place our weighted ejectors, right? You right click on the basin to set that as its output, and you place it on the ground. Same thing here, shift right click to set as the output, place on the ground. And then on top, we're gonna have our mechanical mixer, just like before, and then we need our funnels, make sure these are pointing out, and then this one is pointing in. And our basin moved when we place the ejector, so we just wanna make sure we right click with the wrench to move it back. Now the reason why this barrel is sitting up in the sky instead of just like this one, if you have your funnel on the side, it will block the weighted ejector from being able to eject. So if you put a block up, it won't block it anymore. Now we just need to supply this one with power. So we put our lovely little gearbox, make it a vertical gearbox, run some shafts up with some cogwheels. And then I love this part. You can just put a gearbox between the two here and then you're all set. Supply it with a bit of power. You'll see the weighted ejectors fall into place. You can increase that power too. And this one doesn't matter which direction the power is spinning, which is just lovely. It can fit anywhere. And then of course, we gotta give it a little test. So we put our iron nuggets in, andesite in, and it's working. And this one doesn't take filters or anything like that. You are all set to go right out of the box. And this right here is another honorable mention. It is portable storage. So it's pretty much a vault on wheels that you can interact with. Super easy. I originally saw this from Chosen Architects video and I love it and I just wanna share it with, and I just wanna share it with you guys. So it's super simple. You have an input chest on the top, now put just on the bottom and your blaze burner to interact with our storage interface. So you can say like, I want these and the casings. It's gonna output them automatically. We have them down here. We can of course store things back in our storage here and we can interact with them with our stock keeper. Then you can power the cart assembler if you have it set to lock rotation <laughs> and then pick it up with a wrench and you are all set to go. You can take it anywhere, plop it back down as needed and it is all set. So of course, I'm gonna show you how to build it next. This one's the only difference is we're not going to start with our input or output chest. We're actually going to start by placing a minecart rail on the ground with a cart assembler on top. And then we can place our barrel, but this will help us more so for building the vault. Once you have the vault, it's really easy to build the rest of it. So I like to get that done first. And then you can extend this to the max size of the vault if you'd like, but a three by three is more than enough for what I need. Then we can go ahead and place our packagers and shoots around this whole device. So we want our two barrels here. So this is our input barrel. This is our output barrel. We're going to have our packager pulling from the vault up here, down a chute, putting into the barrel here. And then same thing on this side. We're going to pull from the barrel here, go down a chute, and put into the vault here. Now we're needing our interface for this. We need a stock ticker in the middle here, nice and compact and just hidden away. You're going to link it with the stock link to, to the packager so it tells it, hey, read this inventory place your blaze burner in front this will be your entity to interact with blaze burner is important because you can pack this up and bring it with you and on top you just need a lever here telling it to always pull from this barrel lastly you're just gonna need a minecart down here and to super glue this whole thing together luckily it's a very compact shape so it's a very simple super glue it's important when you're super gluing this not to super glue extra blocks so you don't actually take other things with you and then you can place the lever down at the bottom here make sure you set this to lock rotation before you flick that lever Click the lever and you can take it with you on the go. Right here is the most useful machine you can make in your create mod world. It is a bulk processor. This will 
allow you to do any type of crate mod processing as well as smelting really quickly and without fuel. Those are very important parts. So we have this little test here. Show you, we can place in our haunter. See, it comes out of the barrel, plops on the ground. It's blown by this fan with the little haunting particles. And it will go into this brass funnel once it's haunted to be stored in there. So of course, I'm gonna show you how to build it. This one's a little funky to set up. It's not really possible to start with that normal like input output side. Um, we're gonna set aside a block here. This will be our block to power our fans. Then we'll do our fans right here. We wanna make sure they're facing towards us this direction in whatever direction we're gonna be processing. Then we're gonna need our blocks that are like processing activators. I don't know what to call them are on. Then we can place our barrels on top of there, just like so. Anywhere I'm using polished andesite, you can place whatever block you want besides wood. Wood will catch fire. <laughs> So do not do wood. Then you need a block for the items to glide along to be processed. You can make it two blocks. And then you're gonna need our outputs. So a bunch of barrels right here. Then you need brass funnels on the top to pull items out, then a bottom to push items in. Again, make sure you're correcting the direction with a wrench to make sure they're flowing in the right direction. We are gonna need to put filters on here and now is the perfect time to do so. So we aren't getting blown by whatever we are processing. So you're gonna use an attribute filter, this little guy, and you're gonna find items that you would process into other items. So sand has three different outputs you can do from it. So it's a very good option. Bring it into the attribute filter plop it in here as a reference item you scroll down to can be washed you want to make sure you set it to a deny list so it doesn't allow items that can be washed and add a tribute to the list you want to make sure you're doing each filter separately so you do the can't be washed filter i'm gonna put this on the end over here and then we're gonna go back to it we're gonna delete our filter list do our haunted filter deny list add a tribute to list okay i'm gonna put the haunter over here and we're gonna do it again delete the list put the sand in can be smelted okay add an attribute to list bam put it right here then we're gonna delete the list put the item in can be smoked, add attribute to list, okay, perfect. Then it is the perfect time to go ahead and put your activators in. You are gonna need a trapdoor of some kind for the lava to hold it in place. Everything else will hold themselves in place, which is perfect. You can either use the campfires or the actual fire blocks, but I find it's better to use the campfires as they're a little more self-contained and can help contain our lava. Place our lava here in the middle, and then we're gonna place oak leaves with a water bucket in it just to contain the water. Then of course, like before, we're gonna go ahead and power this thing. You, again, can power this however you like. I will be using a case chain drives which are my least favorite block but it's okay i can suck it up because it is very compact we'll supply our power we're going to make sure it's spinning the right direction which is this way and it honestly doesn't even move faster than 16 rpm because you only need to push two blocks and the only thing that increasing the rpm does is just increase the distance it will push so this is all you'll need and then of course we want to make sure we're testing everything to make sure it is working we can input our sand we can input some cobblestone to turn into stone we can input some dough to cook into bread and then some gravel to turn into iron nuggets then we got to wait it out until they process this is very slow so it takes a while but it is much faster than the other options <laughs> and there you go you can see we pr processed soul sand your bread you got your flint and iron nuggets and you are all set important note if you are processing something like stone you want to make sure you update your filter just replace it just because it can be processed twice there you have it five very useful machines for your create mob world plus a couple honorable mentions all the schematics for these will be in the discord link down below so definitely check it out and you can also have some create mod discussion we're all here to help we've been helping each other with a lot of different create mod ideas discussing ideas sharing ideas it is a great little community and i really would love for you guys to join us over there but that's all i have for now so thank you for watching make sure you to like comment 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 what you thought about this other machines you use that I might not have touched on. I would love to hear them, of course. And until next time, see you later.